My name is Daniel Galmish and I had four Michelin star restaurants. Been brought up in a lovely environment in France, in the east of France, Franche Comté, where I learned a lot about the produce through my great auntie with her farm. Simple is actually not that easy unless you have the right produce. This is for me the key. Chocolate mousse, one of my favorite bitter chocolate mousse. Why do I say bitter? Because we use bitter chocolate chips. About uh, between 64, 72, 75 percent pure cocoa, really nice. It gives a nice bitterness, but not over the top. If you go for 85, 80 percent, 90 percent, really, really bitter. Okay. So first thing we need to do, chocolate to put melt. So first, I've got container, obviously hot water. So you need to make sure that the container doesn't touch the water because it will affect the chocolate. Chocolate is very fragile. If there's too much heat underneath, it will separate and after that you will not be able to get it right. Okay, so it's very important. Then it's warm enough for the chocolate to melt. You need to try to respect. Okay, so that's the first thing we do. Off we go. So the reason we're using chocolate chips because obviously it does melt quicker, which is uh, the essential of it. Okay, so you just light it, you leave it. No problem. Now I've got a pan with a little bit of water to be able to blanch the zest of orange. So how to do zest of orange? Okay, peeler, like that, oh sorry, okay, voila, zest of orange, let's use that, okay, et voila. So you can put them one by one, two by two, with a good knife, take your time, it's not a challenge, and you're doing some lovely zest like this, okay? Be careful your finger. I say that sometimes when I say, at the same time I say that I cut myself, but not today, hopefully. Yeah? Okay, you put them two by two, keep your finger like that, okay? And, and as you cut, you push with the thumb which is in behind, which is quite important. Take your time, it's not a competition. Do them regular, quite thin, so they all cook the same. You don't want massively a massive chunk. Okay, take your time, do it properly. It's always tricky when you arrive at the end to try to get the same than the other one. Okay, let's do another two like this. Okay, take it like that on the lens. Et voilà. Et voilà. Okay, so why do we blanch the zest? For simple reason, then even if sometimes you buy organic or unwax or whatever, it's still sometimes they have spray, spray with uh, uh, chemicals. So we put it there and we're going to blanch it one or twice. And you will see the water will get really a bit dirty. Uh, but, uh, you know, voila, okay. And you blanch them. So we've done some earlier, uh, obviously, but I'm going to show you the first process of that. So now, while that is blanching, what do we do about the orange? You're not going to throw that anywhere, whatever. So I'm going to show you how to make zest of orange in the same time. So you take the first part, turn the orange like that, and you're doing the second part. Then, when you got there, you go with the knife from the top in here, and you're going down in here, and remove all the pits of the orange there, eh? yeah? Look at that, okay? So you go, you take your time, you go slowly, you go just around, you follow the shape of the orange. But if you go straight in here, that's what will happen. So you need to go and follow the shape while I, and you go down and you go down. And if you haven't managed, you turn the orange upside down on the other side and you finish the one which has been not done properly. Okay, that you don't need. Okay, and to make the segment, you can see that it's all separation with a small membrane. You go for the first one and you go for the second one, okay? And I've got some already prepared in here, okay? Bon, you go there and you push it up like that. Look, the membrane is neat, you don't have to. Go behind that one and you push it. Go behind that one and you push. So it's a really, really easy way to do your segment and you've got a really clean, clean membrane and voila, you just push it like that. Up, look, wonderful. It's a nice way of doing it. You don't have to cut all of them like that. You just push it, yeah? 
And what do you do after that? You press it. You collect the juice. Everything you use. Okay? You put that in here. And what we will do after, or what you can do, you do a beautiful orange salad with tarragon. Because people always think orange and mint or orange. Okay? This is blanche. You can see the water is green and there's a bit of deposit in here. You pass it on. Okay? And there, you can already see then the, the, they are pre blanche Look at the color of the water. It's amazing, isn't it? Okay? And, and that's what you do. And after that, put it back there, repeat it once more, rinse again, and when you put, back, put them back in here, you just really literally cover them with water and sugar, and you do your zest. And that's what we've got. Okay, we prepare that, so it's easier. Okay? All right, let me put that on side in here. We don't need it now, but it's just to show you. And, and they are comfy. So when the zest are comfy, you can see the zest is becoming translucid and shiny and beautiful. And that beautiful syrup there, you keep it, we drizzle the top when the chocolate is ready. Okay? So chocolate is melting, that's what we need there. The other pan in here, it's the same, water, you don't touch the pan. Also, for the eggs, it's much more fragile because the heat will turn the head. You don't want to make a scramble egg, you are making a hot emulsion. So, off go the egg yolk, as this, make sure you collect everything so you, the recipe is followed properly. Yeah, And also, I need a touch of water with it. So, take the spoon and I'm going to use that. So, the reason I put water in the egg, okay, and obviously, I need sugar. Okay. That's it. And three, three spoons of water. The reason I put water with the egg is because I like my, my mix to be light. Because as the eggs and the sugar goes up and up, it can be tight and tight. And if you do that, that means your result on the chocolate mousse can be heavier. And it's always, it's only down to the fact that the water will, will make the, the, the base liquid a little bit softer and lighter. And as you beat the eggs and do your thing, which I will show you, so one, two, three. Okay, whisk, you mix it all together in here. Okay, another spoon of water because I didn't put completely. Voila, okay. And you mix it like that. So that's your base, and after that, Put it in here, gas back on. You only want the water to barely simmer because it's only the steam who will heat up your containers. That's very, very important. You don't want a scrambled egg, that's for sure. Okay? So, okay, you just make sure that it's warm enough and the steam, which will, which will make the heat enough of what you need for the eggs. All right? So I need to keep an eye on that. Chocolate is starting to melt, you can see in here. I haven't touched it. You don't touch it, you don't need to at this stage. It will melt slowly. And the key for it, like I said, it's the chocolate to stay shiny, to stay all together, not melt too far and attach to the bottom and become darker crumble like splitting. Because if you see in chocolate, there is fat as well. Don't forget. Yeah? So I'm making some noise, sorry. Yeah? You can do eight, like what we call like this, okay? Or you can al always beat like that, okay? So wh what does the mix go up? It's the movement you make and the air molecule going down and mix on the top of the heat. And the eggs will emulsion, okay? And if you see that the eggs are tight again, what you do, you add a little bit more water so we drop down a little bit and you've got really light mixture, yeah? You can see? Okay, so now I know I need a little bit more water because otherwise it's going to be too tight, okay? It's good, it's a sign of good egg. It's good for your muscles, you'll see. You, you, you'll, be, you'll be quite impressed with that. Look at the mix. Already it's become a bit whiter. 
and that's normal. And more and more you go, more it becomes white and fluffy and creamy. And we it be ready when we keep it to the ribbon. And I will show you what it what we mean by that. Also talking about sugar, as you know, now a lot of recipe we cutting the sugar a lot. There is no much sugar in here. I put uh, about 75 grams. The rest goes. Uh, obviously for the zest, so the 25 gram, which creates your, your syrup and your zest comfy. And um, in uh, the uh, whipping cream, we only put barely a spoon of um, icing sugar, okay? So if, uh, if the chocolate is not quite ready, you can stop, stop the process, check your chocolate, wooden spoon or a uh, spoon like that and just check the way it's melting. It's nearly ready there. I've got only a couple of chips. You can see it stays shiny, it's beautiful. That's what you want, okay? Let me give him a, a, a boost of heat in here a little bit, and that's it. You can see the, the steam a little bit, you know, that's all you need, huh? Chocolate is nearly ready now. Okay, let me check that. Yes, I need another minute on that one, wonderful. So now we should have the full ribbon. Voila, that's what we call the ribbon. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. So that's ready. Perfect. Okay, you keep it there. That's off. Now chocolate is ready. Great. So now we're going to start the process of the chocolate mousse. Let me put that in here. Okay. Let me take this. And slowly, we're going to mix that slowly with the chocolate. It's very delicate, you just need to fold it. You want to keep the lightness, it's very, very important to keep the lightness of the chocolate. Okay? And you use a nice flexible thing and you fold it like this. Like this. Some more, you can see, it's very delicate. Eh? It's always, you need to fold it. Eh? You need to take your time. That's always a tricky part. You need to fold the chocolate, the mix, sorry, the, the egg yolk within the chocolate. It's always the delicate, delicate part of the, of the process in here. I'm very quiet, I'm concentrating on make sure that the mixed really get together slowly and you mix it and you fold it, fold it like that. You need a very good quality chocolate always as well. Don't compromise on the ingredient, never. You need a good, good quality chocolate. There's quite a few now uh, you can buy, so uh, don't compromise. Keep it really nice and lovely. And like I said, about 64% pure cocoa to 75, it's perfect for it. It's not too bitter, and that's what you get so far, okay? Doesn't seem much, isn't it? So we keep it not really, it's delicate on the side in here. So it part, the cream. Okay, and we're going to beat the cream as well. Okay, so we're going to beat the cream as well. Uh, you can use more, use double cream in here. Sometimes I find double cream depending where it's come from, uh, because it's not all, or double cream is double cream, no. Uh, depending on, on the variety, some of it a little bit richer than the other. So sometimes I go for whipping cream, whipped cream, because it's much easier to make it fluffy and light, and it's much lighter as well. So here we stick to the recipe as double cream, uh, but we, I think we find a good one. So uh, it's perfect. Same movement, eh? like this, that's the air molecule who makes the cream go up. Eh? It's not only because you're whisking, it's, it's the air within it. So you make it lighter, and that's why I said the, the whipped cream, if you feel safer with the whipped cream, use the whipped cream, because sometimes that can be very heavy. See, it's almost ready already, look. So I'll do the same in here, I'll probably make a little bit 
of that to drop it down a little bit. Cream ready. That in here. Okay, same process now. Now you add the cream to the mix. So uh, this one, it, uh, the cream is slightly heavier than I thought. Um, so uh, could have, I could have almost done and I have a whipping cream. Yeah, it's a bit too heavy for me that. Yes. It can be a bit tricky, so always a bit safer sometimes to have a cream which is a bit lighter, you see, because you don't get the same volume. Uh, and that's mean you don't get enough chocolate mousse. And that's not good because everybody loves chocolate mousse. So you always want more chocolate mousse, not less, you know. It's all made for the gourmand, especially if your children are there before you, you have absolutely no chance to have any. And you don't want that. Okay. Voila. Okay, so you can see, but it's a little, it's not, for me, it's not light enough. Uh, this one is a little bit too heavy for me, yeah? Okay, lovely. So look at the color. That's obviously the color changed as soon as you add the cream. So now, okay, we're going to put that nicely in here. I love those kind of dishes. It's very simple. It's very beautiful. Zest ready. In here too. And we're going to put the lovely chocolate mousse in here. Look at that. They're quite big portion, those ones. Eh? I, mean, I mean, I've done a full recipe, uh, which normally you do four small bowls, but I can see then uh, people will enjoy this. Sorry, I used my uh, I need to eat. Huh? Okay. Now we've got the zest. Zest confit on the top. Zest confit on the top. Lovely. And also, when you confit that, it release a little bit of syrup. What do you do? Just drizzle it on the top of your chocolate. Like that. And the zest too. Okay? And I like chocolate with tarragon. People will say, oh, mm, tarragon, it does go very well with orange and chocolate. I know the reflex would be mint, but why? 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 Okay? Look at that. Absolute beautiful mousse chocolate. But like I said, uh, if you're not too sure about your cream, just use a whipped cream. You'll have much more light, lightness to the thing. Here we go. Bitter chocolate mousse, orange zest, confit, a bit of orange juice in here or orange syrup, and tarragon. Here we are.